Hi, Sir Moore here. The debate on paid versus free. Just how much free value and content and goodwill uh, and your product and service should you put out to the world unpaid? Uh, and then how much should you charge and when should you charge? Uh, and this is a debate that's been going on since almost the dawn of time. Uh, and you generally have two camps. One camp would be don't really give anything away for free. Your products and services are valuable. You've put your time, your effort, your energy, your study, um, your whole life into your products and services. Why should people have them for free? Uh, when you give stuff away for free, you attract the freebie seekers who are not your ideal client anyway. And then on the other side of it, you have the thought process that the more free value you put out there, the more goodwill you build, the more reach, the more impact, the more followers, the more potential customers. And as such, you'll build trust and loyalty uh, so that then people will engage in your business uh, and your products and services. Now, this might end up turning into a bit of a rant. So I'm just giving you a bit of a warning here. Uh, I'll try my best to keep it balanced. Uh, and I want to look at it from either extreme and then maybe move into some balance. So there is a saying which I really like and I think is true in a lot of cases, not all. And that is free advice is worth every penny. So there are some people out there that think you can get a Google diploma, i.e. you can just uh, research everything for free on Google and you don't need to pay for any training or mentoring or for anyone's products or services. You can just self-teach on Google for free at home in your pants. Uh, and if that was the case, then everyone would be a millionaire. So quite frankly, that's nonsense. And the reason that that's nonsense is because information is only one factor in success. Another factor is implementation. Another factor is accountability. Another factor is that someone's trailblazed and already done a lot of the research and the analysis and navigated all the mistakes. So um, I don't really like attracting people uh, who think that they can uh, succeed in the world uh, via a Google diploma. Uh, and uh, they, it's almost like some people feel that you were born to serve everything to them for free. It's like if you had a restaurant and they came in, they'd expect all the food for free, a tour around the, the kitchen. Uh, they'd like to go upstairs and have a little bit of a free go on your missus. They'd like to raid the fridge and eat everything out of the fridge and then come back next week and do the same. And you don't want to attract that kind of client. Um, and there's plenty of those around, um, people who generally don't value themselves. So in that regard, uh, you'll definitely want to have... a. Um, a paywall, some kind of gateway where, you know, they can consume some stuff remotely for free, maybe podcasts, live videos. Sorry about my analogy, by the way. But sometimes, honestly, some people, it's like the ex expectation, like, give me this, give me that, tell me this, do this, do that, mentor me for free. I mean, man, I've been spending 15 years probably on average 55, 60 hours a week other than my semi-retirement phases, you know, working and studying and learning, investing millions of pounds into my ed education, spending, what, um, you know, 250, 300 grand a month on marketing nowadays. We have 95 staff all in, in our three main companies. And, you know, how am I going to be able to run a business if I can't charge fair exchange? So I wasn't born and you weren't born to service the needs of people who want everything for free. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because, one, there's a lot of people like that out there. Um, and you'll probably want to, I wouldn't say avoid them, because this is not, look, everyone's at where they're at. And some people are just in research stage, and some people have been burned in the past by paying for services. So it's not so much a judgment of them, because there's all different types of those kinds of people. But it's really about how you qualify people. And I think that you should have um, a desire to give a reasonable amount of good value information for free, whether it's on your podcast, doing your live videos, although rather annoyingly I press, press record on this, this would make a good podcast episode and the, the bloody card's not in, so I'll have to do this again. 
um, your YouTube videos, your Facebook posts. You can give a decent amount of content for free and you can appease the hunger of the freebie seeker. Uh, and actually, if you give them some good value there, they may not yet buy your products and services, but they will go and speak highly of you to others. So they can, in some regards, be your ambassadors. So, you know, it's not that you go out and publicly humiliate freebie seekers. A lot of people do do that. And, and I don't really like that. I'm just talking about this from your standpoint. But um, you want to have some rules in place. So one of my rules is I'll help anyone on a 15 minute call if they're really struggling. And I have some rules on on doing those calls so that um, I can protect my time and have fair exchange. Um, and so I'll help anyone. And I'll do if, if anyone says to me, hey, Rob, um, could you do a podcast on X subject? Could you do a YouTube video on Y subject? As long as it fits my niche and I have um, experience in it, I'll happily do that. And I'll happily do things like that, you know, f for the rest of my life. But then that ends. And so once they've had maybe a 15 minute call with me and I've done all the content that I can, if they continue to need my help and support and ask me questions and want one to one help or want to get trained and educated, it's at that point then that they need to invest in one of my courses or programs. Um, and that's usually a good qualifier and a test if they're actually looking seriously about investing in themselves or if they're just look, looking to extract a lot of stuff for free. Um, and so there's that wall there. Now, people usually uh, sit either side of the wall. Some people won't give anything for free. They're worried about, oh, well, if I give stuff for free, then no one will buy my stuff. Or um, it's not fair for the people who paid the stuff if I, for the stuff if I give some of the stuff for free. Um, and there's a small amount of truth in those. But if I'm frank, I, I, um, I like the kill them with content model. So I would rather give too much content than not enough content. Because I think if people feel that your free content is really good, then they'll probably deduce that your paid content or your products or services will be good too. And I think if you're always baiting and switching or just not really giving any good value up front, you're always hiding stuff. I don't think that that really builds up the, um, you know, the goodwill. Now, Gary has said here, make sure the thing you're selling or you want paying for is not available online. So there's definitely the element of do you do online training? Is it um, or do you have an online product or do you have a physical product? But of course, Gary's in the car industry and, you know, I'm, I'm sure he would know that a, uh, a test drive is one of the best ways to get someone to buy a car. But how do you know when someone, um, you know, is maybe a bit of a, a free BC could just looking to test drive everything? Um, now some cars will, uh, car companies will lend you a car for one or two days. I have, um, I like investing in um, high-end audio, high-end hi-fi. Um, and um, there's a two or three dealers around my local area. They'll quite happily drop off, drop off a, 50, pound, a pair of 50,000 pound speakers and just let me borrow them for three weeks. Uh, you know, and that's a lot of trust and goodwill. But you know, when you've got a pair of 50,000 pound speakers in your house, um, and you fall in love with those, that's really hard to return them. And it's actually a good way to sell. And I'm not saying any of this is right or wrong, by the way. I'm just saying you've got to figure out where your line is. So the key for you in your industry, in your niche, is where is the line where free becomes paid, where demonstration becomes actually that they've now got to invest. And I know for a fact there's three or four pieces of hi-fi equipment I've bought from two of my hi-fi dealers. I wouldn't have bought had I not been able to demo them at home. I mean, I'd have happily paid them a retaining deposit, but they didn't ask for that. So they built goodwill. Knowing that I can borrow anything from them, you know, once I uh, listen to something that I like, I'll always buy from them. And there's a lot of goodwill there. And actually, I I'd be really reticent to buy something from someone who wouldn't let me try it first. Now I know someone who can try it first. Just like if you've got information based products and services, if no one will give anything for free and they're just like this, no, 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 you've got to pay for it, you've got to pay for it. Oh, well, if you want to learn about that, you've got to go on my course. Oh, well, if you want to learn about that, um, you've got to, uh, you've got to pay. You're not, you can't, can't get that information. Then of course that may, you may feel a bit like there's no openness there. Now, Gary's also made a good point here on this video because you have to work this out. Um, if you don't do any test drives, well, you're going to probably sell a lot less clients. And is it that big of a deal if there's some people that just skim all your free stuff? Well, probably not really. If they're going around saying that you're kind and generous and you give good value, even if they're not buying from you, is that really a problem? That isn't a problem. Might they be a future buyer? Yeah, probably. Probably um, would become a future buyer. They may just not have the money now.
But now, now let me, me um, flip it on its head. There are a lot of people out there, coaches, consultants, trainers, and many people who have products and services who undercharge for themselves and are giving a lot of coaching and consultancy for free because they just have this inner guilt or just inner lack of worth of being able to charge or fear of what people might do or say about them when they have fees around their products and services or they're, they're overcharging or ripping people off. And then they create this, they, all this guilt and self-worth um, this self-worth hole inside them just means they give way too much for free. Now, when you give way too much for free and then you can't make a fair profit margin and you can't make enough money in your business, you become very resentful and very bitter and very angry at your market, except you attracted that freebie-seeking market because you're giving everything away for free. So you have to think about who you're attracting. Uh, now, um, you will attract... Of course, based on your messaging, of course, based on your niche, of course, based on, you know, your demographic and your own age and experience. But you will also attract based on what you put out. So give too much away for free. You will attract too many people um, who are looking for um, everything for free. So I think it's about setting some rules for yourself. Um, rule, you know, what are you going to give away for free? making sure that it's valuable and not just a bait and switch or a tease. Um, what could you do for people that would build up the trust and the rapport? Uh, accepting the fact that a few people are probably going to game your system. Like if you do property tours, for example, for, to, to sell properties to people, there's going to be some people that are going to come on those tours and they're just probably going to copy you and set up in business in competition. So that makes you not want to do that. But then if you don't do that, you don't get your business. So again, you've got to work out um, what the attrition is and just accepting, um, you know, that some people are going to copy you. Some people are probably going to take you for a bit of a ride. Some people are going to milk you a bit. But where some people are going to do that, some people are going to have trust um, built and then they're going to buy all your products and services and become a lifetime client uh, and a loyal client. Um, now, for me, it's all about the ratio of free versus paid. So um, I probably have about... £120,000 worth of, and that's discounted prices. Um, so courses, masterminds, mentoring, etc. I've got two main companies that sell training and education. And if, if you add the property, the personal development, the business, the public speaking, the e-commerce, and all the different courses and masterminds and mentoring and coaching, etc. And you add that all together, I would say there's about £120,000 worth of course material there. Um, so um, I know that in two years, three years, five years, however long, um, someone be could become a client that could be worth 30, 50, 100,000 pounds to me. So because of that, I think that it's only the right thing to do three podcast episodes a week, two live feed Facebook videos a week, post in different platforms, one YouTube video a day. Um, all the content on the Rob Moore su Supporter Programme, all the content um, on my audio books and books. Um, and I made it a mission of mine to give more content than anybody else in my industry, bar none. Um, and if you can find anyone that gives out more content for free than me, then I will up my game and eat my shirt. If, a few people have been commenting that they like my shirt or it's a new shirt. It's not a new shirt. Thank you for the uh, comments. Um, if you can find someone who consistently gives more value than me in, in my niche, and to, if you add in how many podcast episodes, how many live videos, how many posts in social media groups, how many uh, YouTube videos, etc., I will eat this shirt. <laughs> now, it's because that was always my mission, because I thought if I can give more free, valuable information than anyone else, then I can build more goodwill and trust and rapport than anyone else. Now, Progressive Property, our property training business, is the UK's largest um, property training business. So you could say that those two balance out, i.e., well, I believe, and again, you can prove me otherwise, but I'll, I'll challenge you to do that. I can't see it. Um, I believe we give more value uh, than anyone else. Ali has just said here he can't keep up with all my content. And is that, therefore, intrinsically linked to the fact that we became the biggest property training company in the UK, what, probably five years ago now? Well, to my knowledge, anyway, I did a lot of research. Of course, I looked at turnover and profit and size of a company, etc. For you know, to my knowledge. So you could argue that there's a, a binary uh, relationship between the value you give for free uh, and the courses um, that you run or the information and the size of, of, the, of the growth of your business. Now, paradoxically, because some people are worried about this, some people say, oh, well, if you give too much for free, people won't um, need or want your paid information. I found that to be the opposite. I found the more that you give away for free, 
Um, um, Clive has said Grant and Gary, um, they're not in my niche really, Clive. Um, I do think that they do give a lot of content, but I think they do a lot of repurposing. And I reckon if you look at unique content, I think, mm, yeah, you might find me up there. Um, yeah, so I've never found that the more content we give away, the, the more it harms our business because people think, oh, well, I don't need any of the courses. Because remember, information is only one element. If information was the core commodity of success, everyone would be successful and wealthy and rich and a millionaire. But in reality, there is also accountability. There is motivation. There is inspiration. There is experience. There is mentorship and there is guidance. And all of these elements are in success as well as just information. So I'm happy to keep giving lots and lots and lots of information, new information, repackaged existing information, newly relevant information, information that changes when there's a lockdown, et cetera. Um, so because I have only found that that's increased um, you know, the scale and the growth of my company and the sales of my products and services. And if it were the other way around, then, you know, I might, I might um, review that strategy. Now, one, one element that is important is what you give for free should be different from what is paid. And what is paid should be of higher value than what is free. Now, what is free can be good content, but what is paid has more touch points, more personal, more one-to-one, -one, more accountability, more inspiration, more motivation. Um, more mentoring, more coaching, more masterminding. So you need to do, make sure that you differentiate it because what some people do is they just take their course and they give it all away for free. And then when people buy the course, they're like, well, wait a minute, this was all for free. So Saul has just said there, it's a fine balance. And it is a fine balance. But what you don't want to be is too greedy or um, too giving. Too giving mean, let's talk about fair exchange really quick. So fair exchange is where um, the market perceives that you're giving them good value and the market is grateful for the value that you're giving and the market pays for your products and services. And then uh, on your side of it, you're grateful that you're getting paid fairly for what you're giving and you feel gratitude to your market, not resentment. And it makes you want to continue to do it and you get feedback from the market to keep improving it and you keep improving it and then you feed it back to the market and then the market keeps buying or increasing in the fees. So that's fair exchange. It's the sweet spot between price and value. Price is how much the consumer pays um, and value is how much value you give and the consumer receives. So if you charge £10 for something that the consumer perceives is worth £11, then they're going to be grateful. They're going to feel like they've got good value, maybe even a bargain. But if you charge £10 and the consumer feels that it's worth £9, then they're going to feel ungrateful, maybe that they got ripped off or they didn't get enough information um, you know, or, or value. So you, you're looking to find this fair exchange. Now, here's one thing that's really important on this. Fair exchange is nothing to do with price. I have listened to a podcast that was about eight or nine minutes long for free, and it had three ads on it. And I just felt really quite... Um, what would be the word? I'm trying to not be rude here. Um, I just felt there was no value in it. And I've listened to a three hour podcast and I could have listened to another three hours. I've done courses for 500 quid or a grand that I thought were amazing. And I've done courses for five grand that I thought were average at best. I have meant when I started mentoring, what was this? 2008, uh, my fees were two grand for the year. And now my fees are 50 grand for the year. Occasionally people get discounts on that, but the minimum anyone can pay to get any mentoring with me is 25,000 uh, pounds. And the value is far more now in the 25,000 pounds than was in the 2,000 pounds, far more. My experience, my knowledge, um, you know, the, what I've learned over the years, how many people I've helped and supported my improved systems and programs and processes and, um, you know, having served hundreds of thousands of more people. So fair exchange is nothing about price and it's all about value. Someone could get a £10 watch and feel a little bit ripped off and someone could buy a £100,000 Philippe and feel grateful that the thing is the most beautiful piece of art um, and the most uh, valuable thing that they've ever bought. A bargain. So it's not about price, it's about value. So maybe you're undercharging, maybe you're overcharging and fair exchange will give you that feedback as to whether you're under or overcharging. Right, let's summarise this then, because I did say on this video that I was going to end the debate on free versus paid, and all I've really done is debate it so far. Um, and I did say it might turn into a bit of a rant, and I'm kind of glad it hasn't gone too much of a rant. 
you need to find your fair exchange where you're giving good value for free um, in the form of demonstrations, trials, content value, information, guidance and support so that you can build trust and rapport with your audience so that your audience feel like, well, um, they've given me this much for free and it's really good value. Uh, I'm now invested in them and I follow them and I trust them and I'm going to invest in their f further products and services. Um, if you don't give anything away for free, then you can't build that trust and goodwill and you won't get many clients. However, you have to have a line or a wall whereby you, I'm happy to do three podcasts a week. I don't really want to do one a day yet. I'm happy to do two live feed videos a day. I don't really want to do five a day yet. I'm happy to write one to two books a year. I don't really want to write five a year. So, you know, I'm doing the amount of content that I'm probably pushing myself a bit more through this lockdown, but I'm doing the amount of content that I'm happy with um, and so should you and my audience is happy with if I get to the point where my followers say Rob I'm not sure I can keep up with all this content that tells me I'm doing a good job and I'm putting enough content out there but when people want free mentoring one-to-one -one, and they want me to come over their house and bring all my food and and take my cars with me um, so that they can uh, I can leave them at their house in their garage um, then the line is drawn there. And I used to feel guilty about that. I used to feel guilty that I always wanted to help people and rescue people and save people and be there for everyone. I used to reply to every email, every Facebook message, every WhatsApp message, and then it got too much. And what you find then is you help all these people for free, but what about your customers that have paid? And they actually, you should, you should absolutely help first your customers that have paid and the customers that are more loyal um, because they're the ones that have paid and you need to give fair exchange to them. Uh, so you're, wh wh what is your cutoff point where you go, okay, I've given you now what I can for free. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to take the next stage, then here's what you need to do. And then you give them a call to action. And you're allowed to sell your products and services. You're allowed to run a business. There is no crime against that. There's a few critics out there that think that training organizations, there's some kind of crime against that. And you can learn everything for free on Google. If none of them are millionaires, I've never seen a millionaire critic you know, proper hater critic. I've never seen a millionaire one. Um, usually millionaires are too busy um, with bigger problems than to just sit on Facebook all day bitching and moaning about everyone. Um, so you need to be careful who you listen to. You're going to upset people when you put your products and services out to the world. When you do what you do and say what you say, people are going to hate your face. Um, and that's just the way it is. And that's okay. Um, because that's life. Um, I'm kind of used to that now. In fact, I, I know if I don't have a fraternity of critics and trolls, I'm not putting enough work out there. Um, you know, I don't have enough of a business. I've not got enough reach. Um, someone's all gonna, always going to be upset when you make a sale or try to make a sale or, um, you know, you, ha you have a shop to open or you want to run a business. There's a fraternity of people right now that is in this lockdown that feel that no one should sell anything. It's absolutely disgusting to sell. Okay, so if everyone stops selling, everyone stops selling, what happens to the economy? You smart ass motherfuckers. What happens to the economy if everyone stops selling? Tell me that. I'll tell you what happens. Everybody goes bust. The supply, the, the supply chain, gone. You won't even be able to feed yourself. All the things that you're enjoying while sitting in your pants trolling everyone online, um, they wouldn't be able to create content for Netflix. That, you, that you're sitting there enjoying. So... You're, you're allowed to sell. You're allowed to sell at any point. The key is fair exchange and good value. So we've um, changed our courses from physical to online. We were forced to. Uh, and we've changed our masterminding and mentoring from monthly to weekly. And we're often doing bigger discounts on our courses. And we're often wrapping in more than um, one. So two for the price of one. So that's four times as much support. That's about... Not quite half the price, but a bit more than half the price. And usually two courses at the same price as half the price of one. So I know we're giving extra value. I know we're doing our bit to support people through this challenging time. I know that. I know our courses are worth a lot more. And I know it's a great time for people to um, accelerate their immersion uh, and to you know, learn as much as they can through this time on lockdown. Um, and it would be unfair exchange of me if I just stopped selling all my products and services and just gave everything away for free. I have 95 staff, you know, that they have families. I have all my clients who have paid for existing masterminds and they want those delivered when we're out of this. And that 
uh, has an uh, that has an overhead and an expense and that needs to be covered and that's just business and if people don't get that then just block them and just get rid of them because they're not going to serve you moving forward you are allowed to run a business you are allowed to charge for what you do there is a fraternity of people out there that think that what you do um you are the you are satan and the antichrist um but they, they have too much time on their hands. It, this has turned into a bit of a rant, hasn't it? Um, but I just think it's important for you to know because a lot of people have been messaging me saying, hey, Rob, look, there's a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of criticism. I'm really worried about selling anything because I feel like I'm going to get absolutely attacked. Well, it's, it's an emotional time for people. I have sympathy too for people who are lonely and people who um, have tried to succeed but failed and um, people who are a little bit bitter and have had bad experiences and being burned and you know they've become a little bit of a critic i have sympathy for those people um but you you know you are allowed to run your business so what i would do right now in this lockdown is i would give more value i would um, adapt the value for the current climate i would adapt your products and services for the current climate i'd um add more um into your offering i would price fairly so maybe a little bit lower than you might normally and then I'd scale the hell out of it and I'd just push it as far and as wide as you can. Because let me tell you this, once this lockdown has gone, no one will be able to get the online courses with all the added bonuses and value and the two for the price of one, but then two for the price of a half and then uh, weekly support instead of monthly support. No one's going to be able to get, a, get, to get that after the lockdown. No one. Because we'll go back to live events and that won't be required anymore. So it's a massive opportunity. And I know that in my heart. I know that in my heart. Um, and you need to know that in your heart. And when you know in your heart what you do, what you do is right and that your value is good, then you can go and sell with volition and confidence and service. Ultimately, if you serve people, you are going to win. So finally, to summarise then, fair exchange. Fair exchange. Fair exchange. That's what it's all about. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.